Etam of such power. Swabritri Gajitam explained by their master Yamaraj Bhagavat Mahitvam the extraordinary glory of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his name, fame, form and attributes. Sansmritya remembering this Mitadya whose mind was struck with wonder. Yama Kinkara all the servants of Yamaraj. Hey, they, na, na, e, eva, indeed, achuta ashraya janam, person sheltered by the lotus feet of achuta, Lord Krishna. Prati Sankamana, always fearing, Drashtum to see, Cha and Vibhuti, they are afraid, Tata Prabhuriti, beginning from then, Sma Indi, Rajan. O King. Translation for poet by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta. After hearing from the mouth of their master about the extraordinary glories of the Lord and his name, fame, and attributes, the Yamadudas were struck with wonder. Since then, as soon as they see a devotee, they fear him and dare not look at him again. Purport. Since this incident, the Yamadudas have given up the dangerous behavior of approaching devotees. The Yamadudas, the devotee, is dangerous. So I'm going to keep on reading. So the next text is 35. When the great sage Augustia, the son of Kam. Kamba was residing in the Malaya hills and worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I approached him and he titled Yamaraj instructs his messengers. So now text one to two in the Hamsikuya prayers, chapter six. The blessed king said to Shukadeva Swami, My dear king, the demigods, demons, Human beings, nagas, beasts, and birds were created during the reign of Swayambhu Vimana. You have spoken about this creation briefly in the third canto. And I wish to know about it elaborately. I also wish to know about the potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead by which he brought about the secondary creation. Text 3. Sutta Goswami said, O great sage, Sutta Goswami said, when the ten sons of Pratina Bari emerged, emerged from the waters in which they were performing austerities, he swore that the entire surface of the world was covered by trees. Purport, a king Pratini Bari performing the Vedic rituals in which the killing of animals was recommended, Narada Muni, out of compassion, advised him to stop. Prajini Bharhi understood Narada's properly, Narada properly, and then left the kingdom to perform austerities in the forest. His ten sons, however, were performing austerities within the water, and therefore there was no king to see to the management of the world. When the ten sons, the Prachetas, came out of the water, they saw that the earth was overrun with trees. 
When the government neglects agriculture, which is necessary for the production of food, the land becomes covered with unnecessary trees. Of course, many trees are useful because they produce fruits and flowers, but many other trees are unnecessary. They could be used as fuel, the land cleared, and used for agriculture. When the government is negligent, less grains are produced. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, 1844, Krishi Gorakshavani Jam Proper engagement for vaishas, going to their nature, are to farm and to protect cows. The duty of the government and the kshatri is to see that the members of the third class, the vaishas, who are neither brahmanas nor kshatriyas, are thus properly engaged. Kshatriyas are meant to protect human beings, whereas vaishas are meant to protect useful animals, especially cows. Namo Vishnu Braya Krishna Prasaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamita Namane Namaste Sarasutum Deve Gauravani Pracharane Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paskatya Desatarna. Here it explains about the necessity of understanding how the material nature works. In the age of Kali Yuga, it is said that there is no understanding of Dharma or how the material nature actually works. And there's no understanding what the purpose of life is, namely liberation or moksha. Out of the four Purusharthas, the only ones that are emphasized in Kali Yuga are Artha and Kama economic development for sense gratification. Or in other words, the whole world is filled with those looking for sense gratification, namely shudras, and a few people to cheat them, claiming something is actually going to gratify their senses, but actually doesn't really gratify their senses, but gets them to work like dogs, eat like hogs, sleep like bears, defend themselves like, like tigers. So they're called so-called Vaishyas, but actually they're not Vaishyas, they're Naradamas, and they're, they're not even Shudras, they're only Mudhas. So in the absence of Dharma, well, when there's actually Dharma, then you have four classes of people. You have Shudras, you have Vaishyas, you have Kshatriyas, you have Brahmanas. But when there's no Dharma, then you have no longer any Shudras, you have Mudhas. You no longer have any Vaishyas, you have Naradamas. You have no Kshatriyas, you have simply Maya Pritiganas. And you have no Brahmanas, you have Ashram Bhava Ashvityas. Because people forget what the aim of life is. Not only do they forget what the aim of life is, they even forget how to live properly in the material world. The Bhagavad Gita is actually quite simple, but as we understand, that as soon as one becomes absorbed in sense gratification, then one's intelligence is taken away by illusion. As Krishna says, Jayato Vishyam Bhum Sam. Sangas te shupajayate, Sangas sanjayate, Kama, Kama krodo prajayate. Nowadays, I, I grew up in a place which the avenue was called Church Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. In other words, formerly it was filled with, there was so many churches on that street, they called it Church Avenue. But when I grew up, there were no longer churches. Instead, they replaced them with banks. But they didn't change the name. They could have called it Bank Avenue. Because people thought, now I'm going to church and I'm praying for bread. But why should I go to the church and pray for bread? 
I can go to the bank and ask for a loan. And I can get so much bread. So people gave up going to the church and they instead did their daily pilgrimage to the bank. So in the absence of actual knowledge, without the absence of Krishna consciousness, people instead of going to the church looking at Krishna, they're going shop to shop looking at dresses and pants and perfume and iPads or whatever, contemplating the objects of the senses, praying to the bank, please give me a loan, please give me a credit card, and I can fulfill my desire, I can achieve the goal of life and get the newest iPhone. It has come to the point that people will actually even sacrifice their lives for a new technology. In China, when the iPhone only 5 came out, believe it or not, and it was ancient history, a little after the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, and they had an iPhone 5, he was so enamored with getting, getting an iPhone in China that he, sat, he donated his kidney to get the necessary amount of money to pay for an iPhone. Luckily, although he gave one of his kidneys, he got enough money. Not only he was able to buy an iPhone, but he could also get an iPad. So it was actually worth it. Of course, he had problems after that, and his mother noticed he was having great difficulty. And so when she found out he had sacrificed his kidney for an iPhone, an iPad, somehow or another she didn't appreciate it. But people were so much absorbed and contemplating the objects of the senses that even basic intelligence has been taken away. And the Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Anad Bhavati Bhutani Parjana Anasamba. It's food which is the basic necessity of life. People actually used to live without technology, without cars. Somehow or another, they had the intelligence how to walk because people have lost that knowledge how to walk in many parts of the world. They don't know how to do it anymore. So without a car, they don't know how to, to move. What to speak of a car, they can't even add two numbers together. One plus one is a very confusing and advanced arithmetic calculation for them. So when one, one plus one has to be added, they take out their calculator. And of course, they don't know how to read, so <laughs> the calculator speaks to them that one plus one is equal to two. Otherwise, they wouldn't know what to do. Actually, they find, they did a scientific study, and they found out when people have their iPhone or their smartphone next to them, then they become more stupid. So the phones have become more intelligent and the people have become more foolish. And that will go on to test Chanudinam Dharma Satvam Socham Daya Shama Kaleni Valyan Rajan Nakshantya Yobalam Smriti. Day after day, as technology increases, then as Kali Yuga increases, Tastanudinam Dharma, then as Dharma diminishes, as people don't know what is even the necessities of life, that good food, we're not talking about just food, people put anything into their mouths and they think it's food. They did an experiment, they were trying to figure out the nutritional value of shredded wheat, a popular breakfast cereal in America. So 
though they fed rats thread, threaded wheat to find out what its nutritional value was. However, they were, the experiment was unsuccessful because the rats ate the cardboard box that it came in and they didn't touch the shredded wheat. Because <laughs> the rats had more intelligence than most human beings and they, they knew where actually there was some food value. It wasn't in the shredded wheat, it was in the cardboard box that it came in. So, without uh, dharma, people don't even know that the necessity of life is food. And all the good qualities decrease. As people lose their memory, they can't even act as shudras. They become mudhas. Because a shudra, he takes direction from the higher classes of people. He has shelter in the Vaishas, he has shelter in the Kshatriyas and the Brahmins. So he knows protecting cows, protecting the land. He knows that these things are valuable. And he'll work for them. But when he loses Dharma, when he loses the association of these higher person, classes of people, then he works for insignificant things. Vishnu, Darashaya, Ye Bar, Ye Arthamanina, Andarya Tandira, Vigya Manas, Te Pisha Tantra, Rudami Bada. They don't know that the aim of life is to achieve Krishna. And to achieve Krishna, one has to first of all become liberated from the material concept of life. Bhagavad Gita begins with liberation from the material concept of life. The most basic philosophy of spiritual life is that we're not this body, we have a spiritual identity, we have a spiritual relationship with Krishna. But forgetting that, people have lost all their good qualities because they've become attracted to insignificant things. And therefore, mercy, Cleanly, uh, all these uh, tatas, tunidinam, dharma, satyam, truthfulness. People are situated in a lie that I am this body. Initiation is meant to come to the platform, to exist in the platform, to recognize the platform that my actual identity is gopi uh, bharata pada kamalayor. Dasa, dasa, anudasa. To give up this upadi, all the upadis. But Bhagavad Gita begins with, I'm not this body, I am a spiritual being. I should work in this world to at least maintain this body. Hamasya nendriya pritir lo labo jivata yavata jivasya tattva jignasya narto chas chehat karma vi. At least I should know that because I have a material body and I need the material body in order to perform acts of devotional life, of service to Krishna, uh, therefore I should know how to maintain the body nicely. So good food, pure food, not something which is less than a cardboard box. That is actually what is the necessities of life for. Although we may make Varnashram very complicated, but Varnashram is meant to actually, so everyone gets nice food, proper food offered to Vishnu in sacrifice, and proper clothing, shelter, nice relationships. Uh, this is human life to attain these things. And at the same time, as one gets these things, as one develops spiritual consciousness, Brahman consciousness, as one takes shelter of the higher goals of life, then naturally one is able to decrease one's eating, sleeping, and especially mating and defending. If there's no mating, then there's practically nothing to defend. 
So, the, what's the speaker remember who they are? They can't remember where they put their keys. What they're speaking, remembering where everything came from and where they came from and where are they going. They don't even know where they're going. Sometimes in the airport you see people running this way. They say you try to stop them to sell them a book and they won't stop because they're too much in a hurry. And then they, you see them running the other way because they forgot where they were actually going. So as things go on, people have no idea. Nitevidu Swartika team e Vishnu. They don't know the aim of life. So Tame Krishna Dirashaya Bahir Artamanina. And therefore they're easily fooled by people who are advertising something completely insignificant as something very valuable to spend their energy, to focus their attention on and give their love to. Therefore the aim of the Hare Krishna movement is to teach people uh, what is actually worthy, what are the priorities, even materially speaking. Instead of, I don't know, they used to have TV dinners, but I guess people don't. But now they're too lazy, they don't know how to light the oven, so they have to go to a restaurant. But at least in America, when I grew up, the fad was, TV dinner, so you can just put it into the oven, and then if you knew how to light the match, a light, light a match, then you could actually wait a half an hour and you have your dinner, which is generally some dead animal from the last war that was left over. People thought that was dinner. But Nowadays, people don't know it's too complicated for them, so now they go to the restaurant. Because they don't even know what is actually to be done, what is not to be done. They don't even know what food is. Then, if you have the wrong food, then your consciousness becomes duller and duller and duller. And you can't even understand the first verse of Bhagavad Gita. You can tell someone that you're not your body, but they cannot understand. And even they can understand, just like one time I was distributing books on, in Austin, Texas, to some students, and I approached one student, I gave him one book, and as I usually show them the changing bodies exhibit in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, that this is your body, this is a little baby body, 15-year-old body, and which body do you have? So the student, he looked at the, the book, and he said, oh, I have this body. So I, he said, well, I have. So I gave him the book, and he said, well, why don't you take the book and give, me, and give a donation? But he gave the book back to me and shook my hand. He said, well, that's fantastic information. I'm not this body. And then he left. That's called Maya. He could understand for one moment that he wasn't the body. And then immediately, Maya took his intelligence away. And that was the end. He blew back into the material energy. So in order to keep our intelligence, at least we should know what to eat. If we can't figure out what to eat, because that's what everyone's mostly interested in. Just like Chanaka Pandit says, if you have an unwanted guest, the best way of getting rid of them is just don't feed them. Then they'll go away. Or if you have unwanted relatives, they're staying with you too long, then first you take care, you reduce the vegetables, and then you reduce the grains, then you reduce the salt, then you reduce the spices in the meals. And if they're still there, then you kick them out. There's no way of getting rid of them other than that. But it's food, like, as it says, Prabhupada said, you may be surprised, but atakshi krishna namadi, not bravad grayam indriyai, 
Sevan Mukhe Hi Divado Swayam Eva Sparatida. That no one can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead by one's dull material senses. But when the senses become purified by engaging the tongue in Krishna service, by purifying the, uh, the senses beginning with the tongue, engaging the tongue in Krishna service, then one can actually understand Krishna. So the first thing is to eat prasad offered with devotion to Krishna. Even in the Charak Samhita, which is the basic, the fundamental book of Ayurveda, it mentions that the two, so it is not, Prabhupada said, we're impractical, we're simply talking pr philosophy, we're also giving people prasad. That's our practical, part of our practical application of devotional philosophy. Whereas Prabhupada said the impersonalists, they may speculate day and night, but we'll eat our way back to Godhead. So this philosophy of, or as Prabhupada said, our, not only philosophy, but our prasad with devotion, offering prasad with devotion, it's not so easy. To chant Hare Krishna with devotion, to control the tongue, we have to offer our senses in the fire of sacrifice in devotional service. Otherwise, if we use our tongue, atyahara priyasas cha prajalpo niyamagraha. If we actually engage our tongue in atyahara, eating not more than required, eating prasad, but not more than we need or not less than we need. Shubhra said if we're a mouse. So atyahara, not too much, not too little. Yuktahara viharasya, yukta chaitasya karmasu, yukta swapmi bodasya yoga bhavati bhukaha. Natyashnitas to yogosti, natchai kantamat anashnitaha, the chaiti swapmi shilasya jagato naiva charjana. A yogi doesn't eat too much or eat too little sleep too much or sleep too little, one whose tempers and his habits of eating, sleeping, work, and recreation can mitigate the material pains by practice of the yoga system. So at least we should learn to regulate our senses. Of course, in the beginning, we may not, when we get the opportunity to eat prasadam, we may, probably used to tell, said at the beginning, the new devotees who come, they should eat as much prasadam as they want. They should waddle like a duck. One time I asked the Prophet, when he, came in, when he was in Buffalo in 1969, I asked him, I asked the Prophet, so I said, could I eat as much prasadam as I wanted? Because I was in the habit of trying to be quite austere. So Prophet looked at me and he started to laugh. He said, no, you can eat as much as you want. But then he pointed to my neck and he said, don't fill yourself up to here. To eat prasadam with devotion, and then our desire to lord all the material nature will gradually disappear. Eating is the, our basic, most immediate opportunity to lord it over the material nature. No one may love us. No one may respect us. No one may offer any obeisances to us. But... If we have a carrot on our plate, it's offering full dhanda butts, ready to offer itself in sacrifice to the fire of digestion within our stomach. Swaha. <laughs> and after offering it, it empowers us. We become full of shakti to find more carrots and cauliflower and other such uh, objects of sacrifice offered to the fire of our stomach. In this way, we feel ourselves to be God, full of shakti. So eating is the most basic means we have to lord all of material nature. Nowadays, people feel in many parts of the world that they're ruling the whole world. They have Chiquita bananas flown in from South America, Mangoes, sometimes in some places, flown in from different parts of the world. They have Australian products. For, they think they're, they're lauding, controlling the whole world. 
The whole world is coming to them, uh, ready to offer themselves into their fire of sacrifice in their stomach. And that way they're thinking they're lording over the universe, the world, and they're becoming more and more entangled in this illusory conception of life. What to speak of killing poor animals for their sense gratification. But when one offers food as sacrifice and eats such a sacrifice, especially nice milk products, instead of killing the cow, eat the, to take the milk offered to, from the cow, according to Ayurveda, the milk from the cow is the only food which is offered out of love. And when one takes such food, offered out of love, it creates a maternal consciousness which brings one closer to reality of life, to the dependency upon Mother Nature and the laws of nature and kindness to other living entities. It gives one finer brain sub, uh, tissues to understand the Supreme Father, to understand the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, people become very dull. I was once with Shri Prabhupada, and he was discussing with one Indian gentleman who had his PhD. And Prabhupada was telling him that if you want to know who your father is, then you have to ask your mother. And if you want to know who your well, your mother is the Vedas. He was Indian, so he understood my mother is, my, is the Vedas. So this Indian gentleman, Dr. Lau, he could not understand what Prabhupada was saying. So Prabhupada said, again he repeated, he said that if you want to know who your father is, then you have to ask your mother. And the Vedas are your mother, so you have to ask the Vedas who your father is, and if the Vedas say Krishna is your father. Still, Dr. Lau could not understand. So Prabhupada explained the same thing a third time, and he said, if you want to know who your father is, you have to ask your mother. Dr. Lau, but he said that if you want to know who your supreme father is, then you have to ask the Vedas, and the Vedas say, Krishna is your supreme father. So Dr. Lau said, I can't understand. So Prabhupada looked at him like he was from outer space. And he said, he rang his bell, and Purushottam, his servant, came in. He said, please bring Pushara. Maybe there is some hope. So this basic principle of chanting Hare Krishna, eating Pushadam, Atahara, Priyasas, not over-endeavoring for useless, mundane things. Then we stop our prajalpa. We can use our tongue in glorifying the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the process of devotional service and become greedy to become Krishna conscious instead of entangling ourselves in the greed of the material energy. Then we can accept proper association and develop real uh, patience, confidence, and enthusiasm and make our way back to Godhead. Thank you very much. Grantara Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Pramanande. Are there any questions? We have time for a couple of questions. Yes. Dr. Dr. Lal couldn't understand. Prabhupada's under explaining a simple thing like that. Because what, what he, was that? No, um, How he cannot understand? Well, go to most people on the street and tell them. They'll probably think you're crazy. Because nowadays, if you say, if you want to know who your, mother, your, fa who your father is, ask your mother. In many parts of the world, your mother won't know either. They, want, they can't understand this analogy anymore. How he didn't know, I don't know. 
because obviously he wasn't a very, you know he wasn't performing so many pious activities. Therefore, his his brain became very dull. People can't even understand that their body is changing, but they're not changing. What to speak of people? How much have we understood that we're not this body? What to speak of how much we've accepted that our only identity is to be the servant of the servant of Krishna? So that's how powerful the illusory energy is. Anything else? Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much for your enlivening class. You spoke about the uh, eating as a basic necessity of life and the same eating can be spiritualized by offering to de uh, deities and taking prasadam. Now my question is regarding, because I have always been thinking about this, that the Mahaprasad that comes, that is being cooked by the uh, properly initiated brahmanas, uh, second initiated brahmanas offered to the de main deities of the temple. Uh, this is one type of prasad which we generally take. And the another is which is cooked in the devotee kitchen, which may not be cooked by the uh, second initiated brahmanas and may be cooked by a devotee, uh, maybe like me, who, uh, who don't have that consciousness. So what difference it makes? Uh, uh, this is my first question. What different, uh, difference it makes whether it is uh, cooks? And second question is... Well, let's start one question at a time. Well, there are different factors in a sacrifice. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Brahmarpanam Brahma Haivir Brahmagno Brahma Hutam Brahmaiva Tena Gantavya Brahma Karma Samadina A person who is fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness is sure to reach the spiritual kingdom because it's his full contribution to spiritual activities which are the offering, the consummation, the ones who are sacrificing, etc. all become Brahman. So to a certain extent, it depends upon the consciousness of the person who grew the food, what, what kind of the quality of the food they were growing, when it was picked, how it was delivered, how it was prepared, how it was offered, how it was taken and eaten. So for the most part, we have little control over where our food was grown, unless we are growing it ourselves, what the quality of the seeds were, what the environment was. Uh, we can have some control if we're growing our own food, but otherwise we're talking about living in a temple or taking from a temple. So we don't have that, we don't have that control over that situation. Similarly, what the consciousness of the person who's cooking, what the, how it was being served, we may not have much current control over those things. But everything depends upon quality and consciousness. But we do have control over our own consciousness. Prahlad Maharaj was offered poison, but because he accepted it as, as Krishna's mercy in full devotion, therefore it, to him it was, became like nectar. But we may not be so conscious, Krishna conscious. And therefore when we have discrimination, Prabhupada said we should utilize it. So, how we see it? Well, if it's being cooked by devotees and in the temple, then we should accept it as we have more of a connection with the deities. So when we take the prasad, we can remember the devotees and we can remember the deities also. And therefore, when we take it from the offering from the kitchen where the devotees prepare it, we should also understand they've offered to Krishna too. So we can remember Krishna. If we remember Krishna, then that taking prasad is perfect, whether it's from the temple or from the de devotee kitchen. But without remembering Krishna, then whatever we're doing is incomplete. And we can remember Krishna, but the question is, what is the quality of our, how, what is the quality of our eating the prasadam? Is it being done with devotion? Are we actually chewing the food and relishing it as non-different from Krishna? an opportunity to associate with Krishna through remembrance and associating with his prasad. The more devotion, the more, the more we concentrate 
our attention, give our love to the prasadam, then the more it becomes an act of devotion, then the more we enter into the spiritual platform by taking such prasadam. Thank you very much. So we'll stop there. Thank you very much. Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai. Gaur Pimanande.